Need some help with that. <laughs> no, that's okay. I think I got it. Really, I'm, uh, I'm actually quite good at this. Okay, Clark. <laughs> no, that's enough, really. Well, I haven't finished. <laughs> uh, yes, you have. Look, I'm only trying to be friendly. If there's anything wrong with that. No, there's nothing wrong with that. Thanks. jail. Calm down, buddy, huh? Hey, how about we go get a drink, huh? Look at Patch. Look at this. I'm a mess. <laughs> We're not going out to the fair, Mark. We're just going around the corner for a drink. No, I really don't want to go out. I'd rather, I'd rather stay here. Oh, okay, okay, buddy. We'll stay here. How about a beer, huh? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Two cold ones. These are on me. Thanks, Arch. Hey, B. What are we going to do with our little business, huh? Uh, what do you mean? Huh? Why? Well, I mean, all this stuff with your daughters. Look, I, I don't want to get caught. we got a good thing going here. I, I, I know that, Raj. Think I know that? But just gonna have to wait and wait and see. Well, I'm not gonna wait much longer till I'm out of here, huh, buddy? Right, right, right. Is there any more beer? Oh, calm down, huh? Look, you don't want to get plowed again, do you? You're probably right, you're probably right. It's the last one. Oh, oh sure. There's always the last one. Oh, what's up with Max? He said he loves me. He's really jealous of Tony. Tony? Why is he jealous of Tony? Because Tony kissed me. He kissed you? Oh! Really? <laughs> well, what? Come on, don't leave me hanging. What? He kissed me, that's it. Well, what did you do? Did you respond? Get closer. Did you like it? Barney. How could I like it? I don't even love it. Oh, Rach, don't be such a prude. You don't have to be in love with a guy to like the way he kisses. Some guys just know how to kiss. Is he? Marnie, this isn't a game. You know, we could end up in jail, and all you care about is how this guy kisses? Well, nobody knows anything, and he can't remember. So what are you so worried about? I don't know. I have a feeling that he knows the truth. Well, we have to convince him. I mean, how hard can it be? 
<laughs> that was good looking. <laughs> so very, very rich. I mean, look at all of this. Ah! <laughs> like, I'm in a dream. We have to call Dad. I bet you he's worried about us. How are you two getting along? Fine, thanks. Fine. Well, make yourselves at home. This is your home, after all. Thank you. Have you seen Tony? No. Oh. Tony, who could possibly want you dead? Tony, why Oscar? Tony's a nice surprise. How are you? Yeah, well, thank you. I'm better now that Tony's had Don't get up, dear. How are you feeling? I'm better, thanks. You discussed your loss of memory with Oscar. That's what we were just talking about. What do you think? Well, I suggest that you go to the States, see a specialist, and get a thorough check out. Oh, I'm so relieved to hear you say that. I think so, too, and the sooner the better. Will you stay for lunch? That's very kind of you, Victoria. I do have another appointment, perhaps another day. Oh, thank, you. thank you for coming. Pleasure. Lunch will be served shortly, all right? Uh -huh. Nice to see you. Bye-bye. Tony, what are you going to tell Victoria about just here? I'm not going to tell her anything. I do not want to hurt her. What are you going to do? I don't know. It's all very strange. There's only one logical explanation. What might that be? That Rachel's a gold digger. That she planned the entire thing, passing herself off as my widow. You know why? For my fortune, no less. Tony, that is absurd. It is. Oscar, think about it. It makes perfect sense. That's why she was so surprised to see me here alive. That's why she's been acting so strange. But there's one thing that I just can't understand. Won't mind that, baby. On the day of the accident, Rachel was up in San Francisco, which means that she must have an accomplice. Someone who knew my schedule for that day knew it intimately. Tony, that is absurd. Now you're talking nonsense. You know, I'm thoroughly convinced that one blow on the head's affecting your journey. Well, maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I'd like to introduce you to uh, Dr. Moore. He's an old, old friend of the family and an excellent doctor. We met before, Rachel. You possibly don't remember. It was at the memorial that was held for this show, man. Standing right there. I'm sorry. I met so many people that day. This is my sister, Marnie. Hey, what's up? Nice. Mm. Hey, but don't worry about it. You must have been under a lot of stress that day. You were in shock. Well, she still is, though. She still cannot believe that I'm standing here alive. Yeah. Hey, I really have to go out. It's my next appointment. I'll take care of yourself. Absolutely. Nice to meet you. Bye. 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 I, I want to call my dad. I'm going to dial it for you. No, that's okay. You know how to dial the states from here. Mm-hmm. No answer. Rachel, does your father know you're no longer a widow? Yes. Marnie called him and told him. And you left her here? Go back to San Francisco? Why would you do that? Why would I stay here? Why would you stay? Why would you leave? Look, you being my widow, this all would have been yours. Because I just wanted to go. You just Look, can you leave Marnie here? Must have been one hell of an emergency in San Francisco. No, it was And Max? Max? What did he say to make you come back? He said that I should come back to avoid the scandal. Imagine your surprise. To come back and find me here alive. Yes, I was. And now you're back. And all you can say is, I want a divorce. But no alimony. Of course, now, you don't care about the money, do you? That's right. That's ridiculous. Look, what does your father do for a living? He's retired. And how much money did he make? He had a small salary and some commissions. And your sister? She's looking for work. What about me? What was I making? I don't know. I never asked. Oh, you're not very interested in your spouse, were you? Okay, I didn't get married because of the money, okay? I got married because I was in love. 
Yeah, just like any normal woman. Oh, like any normal woman. One who doesn't care less whether her husband's alive or dead. I mean, what has happened that from one minute to the next you've fallen completely out of love with me? I mean, Anthony, what has happened? Your hands off her. What did you say? Go, man, you're hurt. Why should you care? Tony, you're being a jerk. But Max, it's none of your business. Get out of here. Listen, Tony. No, Max, you listen. Look, as long as this woman has my last name attached to her, she belongs to me. Understand? I don't belong to anybody. Look, and I am leaving this place whether you want me to or not. So don't try to stop me. You know what? I am had it with both of you. You've been thinking a lot about Rachel lately, haven't you, Max? Oh, I don't like it. You gotta let her go. I do? Why is that? Well, she doesn't love you for one. Well, she doesn't, Max. How do you know? I can see. Anyone could. But we'll see. We'll see. No, you're not, because I'll break the window. I'll scream. Like, I heard yourself breaking the window, Rachel. But you can scream as much as you'd like. You get back here. Why are you doing this to me? You'd know me a little better, Rachel, before we got married. You'd know I'm not easy to manipulate. So relax. I'll come get you for lunch. No, you won't! under any circumstances. Is that clear? That's right, even if she is with Victoria. Or Max. That's right. Inform the staff. You are a sap. Why do you want to keep her? She doesn't love you. Is that so? Come with me. This is all. All of your appointments for last week. Every one of them, you're sure. <laughs> All of your appointments your secretary knew about. Why, right, something wrong? No, nothing's wrong. Charles, have you confirmed the reports on the accident? Yeah, I have. Uh, I don't want the media to get a whiff of any of this. Well, not to worry. I did tell the chief of police, but he agreed to keep it under his hat. Thank you, Charles. Uh, now please keep this to yourself, huh? Absolutely, Tony. You know you can count on me. Thanks. Hello, darling. Where have you been? Hello. I was out. Listen, then, could you spot me a couple dollars? Before? Well, I, I owe somebody money. Let me guess. Frank? You got it. What did you lose at this time? Horses. How much? Just a few hundred dollars. Next time you go, take me with you. Seems you only know how to lose. Oh, darling, I'd love for you to join us. We might just have to do that. That would be great. Now, um, darling, about the money. Could I have it now? Please. It's in my purse in the bedroom. Thanks, love. You're a real sport. I'll talk with you later. Then. 
Why would he lock you up? Because he's crazy. He doesn't want me to leave. Why do you have to do something? Well, Rach, you told me that. I, what are you doing? doing? It's Rachel. Tony locked her up. Why would he do that? You got mad? Rachel? What? Honey, what happened? <laughs> Tony won't let me leave. I don't have to stay here if I don't want to. Well, of course you don't have to. I'll go and talk to him. Don't worry about a thing, all right? Rachel, what the hell happened? I don't know. Have you seen Tony? He's in the office. Did he really lock Rachel in her room? I don't know. But ever since the accident, he's been acting kind of strange, hasn't he? Did you know that Rachel doesn't love her? What? Did you know that she wants to leave? And Tony's keeping her, forcing her to stay here against her will. What do you mean she doesn't love him? She just married him. He's her husband. Maybe you forced her to marry him. You ever think of that? Oh, Matt. All I'm saying, Mom, is maybe you ought to talk to him. Talk to him and try to convince him to let her go. <laughs> What's going on? What do you mean? Did you really lock Rachel in her room? Tori, she wanted to leave. You can't keep her here against her will. I don't understand this. You two just got married. Max told me the strangest story. She doesn't love you and that you forced her to marry you? I never forced her to do a thing. I'm convinced I've never seen that woman in my life. And I know she's not my wife and I did not marry her. You can't be serious. Victoria, my secretary, just sent me the schedule. According to this, I there's no calls to San Francisco, no appointments in San Francisco. I was never in San Francisco. But, but darling, your secretary doesn't always know where you are. I know, because sometimes I try to find you and she doesn't know. Just if you wanted to keep a secret, honey, all you would have to do is not tell her. Why would I keep her a secret? Besides, according to that schedule, the day that I was supposedly getting married, I was up in Ixtapa doing business. But were you really there? I don't know. I can't remember. But while I was up there, I must have certainly talked to someone. In San Francisco, I mean, I don't remember the apartment, living there, nothing. You want to know why I can't remember those? Why? Because they never happened. Oh, Tony. Look, I'm serious. I'm convinced that I've never met Rachel before and that she is an imposter. You know what's even more serious? What? The accident. It wasn't an accident. Someone tried to kill me exactly one day before my supposed wedding. Oh, no, Tony. Oh, you that were true. You don't think that Rachel had anything? I'm not by yourself. Oh, it can't be true. Why, Max went to San Francisco. He went to the city hall. I mean, your marriage is on record there. I think the problem here is your loss of memory. Whatever you do, for heaven's sakes, don't mention this to Rachel. Oh, no, you've already done it, haven't you? Is that the reason she wants to leave? She wants to leave because she said she doesn't love me. She said getting married to me was this big mistake. Well, then, honey, if that's the way she feels, you've got to let her go. You have to behave like the gentleman you are. I'm sure that Rachel is an imposter. And I need to find out the truth. What are you going to do? Turn her into the police? Absolutely. Oh, Tony, no. If nothing else, just think about the family, honey. Now, listen, when your father died... He left you in charge, and he did that for a good reason, because you have good judgment. He knew you'd take care of us, and that you wouldn't, you wouldn't involve us in any scandals. Now, you said that all our friends were led to believe that you already knew Rachel. Well, of course. What else were we supposed to do? Tell everybody that you went off and got married and didn't even tell us? Victoria, look, don't worry. I need to find out the truth, but I will handle this with the utmost discretion. Could you please understand that? 
Yes, but... And I'm going to ask you to do one thing, not to tell a soul. Not even Max? Not even Max. I know he's your son, but please, this is an extremely private situation. I don't. That's the way you want it. Yes, that's the way I want it. He locked her up. What are we going to do? Tell her to be ready. We're leaving tonight. You think the guards at the gate are going to let us go? No, but we'll take a boat. Once Rachel's in San Francisco, Tony can't come back. That means we're going to lose all this. Don't bet on it. Just make sure she has everything she needs. Well, she needs a lot of things, but the first thing we need to do is buy her some dresses so that she looks like she belongs to this family. Do I have to bring your lunch to her room? Please do. All right. Now listen. The first time I saw her, I thought she was a very nice girl. Now you treat her kindly, so you won't be sorry for it later on. Oh. I'll be back. Why? Yeah. What size do you use your sister wear? What size? Mm hmm Dress size. Oh, two. Why? Well, Tony wants to buy her a few things. You mean he's not mad at her anymore? Not anymore. Hi. Look, Rachel, I'd like to ask you to forgive me. Please. I requested that lunch serve for us on the terrace. Is that okay? No, it's not okay. I want to go home. Look, Rachel, from the second I saw you, I knew you were smart. Please give me a moment. Hear me out. Okay. Look, I am so sorry if I hurt you when I said I didn't love you. But I just cannot remember. And it is extremely difficult for me to come home, find out that I'm married, and not remember a thing about my wife. But you can be sure of one thing, that whoever I did marry, I must have loved very much. Rachel, I'd like to ask you another favor. It's for you to please help me to remember. I don't feel good. What's wrong? Tony, I would give half my life to go back to the way things were. What do you mean? Why don't you let me take you out to dinner? I know a fabulous restaurant we can go to. What do you say? What if I beg? I ask you as a special favor for me. Look, if you want a divorce, that's okay. But I'd like for it to be amiable, and I'd like to be your friend. Okay. Lunch, sir. Thank you, James. On the terrace, please. I thought we might go shopping first. Of course. Is the plane all set? Yeah. It's all uh, wired up and ready to fly. You, uh, you going with her?
Well, how could I think? Marty told me you were a size two. Thank you so much, Victoria, but I, I, I can't accept this. But your husband bought them for you. Come on, Rachel. And sometimes she gets embarrassed by this kind of thing. Oh, I think I understand why. I think you must be... Well, all of this must be a big surprise to you, Tony's family and his position and everything. But, dear, you have to face some facts. You're Tony's wife now. I, I don't know how to say this without insulting you, but you really can't go out this evening in the clothes you brought. If you do, people are going to say, well, look, there's Tony and his wife out together, and she's dressed inadequately, and you must not like her very much. You don't want people to think that, do you? She's absolutely right, you know, Rach. And besides, don't be embarrassed that your husband buys you things. That's what he's supposed to do. Now, why don't you try something on? I'll be back to see how it looks. Okay? You're an idiot. I should whack you on the head. What? He's not my husband. Yes, he is. You married Tony Stockdale. He's Tony Stockdale. No, I didn't marry Tony Stockdale. I married Mac. Fine, fine, whatever. Just wear one of your stupid dresses out tonight with Tony. You're going to look completely cheap next to him. Make him real proud to be with you. Can't you see what you've got here? No, I can't. You know why? Because the only thing I'm thinking of is that I'm lying to Tony. It's not fair to him. <sighs> He doesn't deserve it, Marnie. Have you seen Max? Hey. Marnie, don't play with me right now. Have you seen him? Yes. Well, what did he say? Is he going to get me out of here? Mm. Yeah, he didn't say anything about that to me. Will you take off that necklace? I look like you didn't want it. Oh. Don't get up. She didn't want to accept the dresses. So. Oh. Why not? I don't know. I had to convince her it would be better for all of us if she'd dress up to a certain standard. So? She's not a gold digger. I don't think so, Tony. At least not from what I see. Yeah. Do you still think she's part of a scam? I don't know. Look, maybe someone's putting her up to. Oh, Tony, who in the world would do that? I have no idea. No idea. Are you going to tell her what you think? Look, I could. But I don't want to hurt her to think at all. Besides, she seems so sweet. And innocent. Tony, I think you married her. I think you can't remember it because of your concussion. Well, we'll see. So beautiful. It's not as beautiful as you are. Tony, don't. Why not? Because I, I, I can't accept that. <laughs> like jewelry? It's nothing like that. I just can't. Okay, say no more.
Ptolemy make him look suspicious, right? She's an idiot. She never should have gone out with him. When she had more than one drink, she could sleep. Where are they having dinner? I have no idea. You have no idea. Marnie, you're supposed to be helping me with this. And I'm doing all the damn leg work. I should after the <laughs> martinis. Come on, it's great. Try it. Just. Mmm. You're right, it is good. So, tell me, what do you think of alcohol? I love it. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. Have you ever been here before? <laughs> Twice. Mm. Once. Once with my, um, my sister and my father were used to doing all his business. Any other time? With Marnie and some friends. You and Marnie came down here by yourselves. Yeah. Must have a mean your father letting you two girls do that. Yeah, well, he isn't very strict. We came down here on spring break. And I remember we ran all over town looking for a hotel room because we didn't have reservations anywhere. That sounds amazing. Yeah. It's like we just took off on an adventure. But we did find a hotel. It's like top of a hill somewhere. It's so much fun. What else is fun for you? What's fun for me? Being with people I like. Going to different places. Listening to music. What kind of music? I like all kinds of music. But I really like love songs. <laughs> I love love songs. You do? <laughs> well, I guess we found a common ground. Yeah, we do. I will drink it up. So. 